Dendrobium unicum is a species orchid and it is a very unique dendrobium. For that reason, it's actually commonly known as the unique dendrobium. It's all in the name, you know. <laughs> it's quite a recent discovery and, well, what do you know, it was Mr. Zeidenfaden who first described it in 1970. Zeidenfaden? Hmm, sounds familiar. Anyway, as part of the Kerker Lab initiative, this is an update on how my Dendrobium Unicum is doing and, well, a little extra included. Dendrobium unicum is considered a deciduous dendrobium, as it is supposed to lose its leaves in fall, winter, making it a winter resting dendrobium. As you can see, mine still has a couple of leaves on the cane that is blooming. So, if you see that your dendrobium unicum is holding on to its leaves and are concerned that it may not bloom as a result of it not having dropped its leaves, Fear not, don't worry, clearly, in different circumstances, the orchid won't drop all its leaves, but still bloom. This blooming is the best I have ever had when it comes to bloom count on my very small orchid that I've had since 2019. I cannot say that it is a vigorous grower, clearly, because I'm so far only getting a single cane per year. We live in hope, <laughs> so I'm pretty pleased to see some maturity progress because of the bloom count, not because of the increase in growths per year. Unicum is perfectly named because the blooms are truly unique. I find that winter resting orchids do not have a long bloom duration either, so the uniqueness of the unicum extends to the fact that the bloom duration with this winter rester is five weeks. Well, that is the minimum if not a little bit more, depending on how the ambient temperature rises or not. Seeing as mine lives in permashade during the blooming period, I have had my unicum blooms for approximately six weeks now, and I live in a very dry climate with an average of 30% humidity. Usually, such a dry climate will take out blooms much faster, but that is not the case with my unicum, thankfully, because clearly, this orchid, ugh, it's difficult to not get enough of it. And don't let the size of the orchid fool you to thinking that it only has long-lasting pretty blooms and that is it. Nope. This compact grower comes with a fragrance so beautiful and enticing, it fills the air even if you find yourself well away from the orchid. On some of my videos where I featured my orchids, I have described the fragrance as that of tangerines but without the kick of citrus. It's as if tangerines have been dried to a fine powder that would be used for culinary purposes as a sand for a dessert. More of the aroma to then get you eating the dessert. But some comments under those videos describe the fragrance as having a combination of apricot and honey. So with that thought in mind, I am now acutely aware that yes, there is a hint of apricot as well. While I do not detect the honey, the apricot is there and that note resembles an apricot that was out in the sun and when you lift it up to your nose, you pick up the warm fragrance of the fruit with the fuzz around it. I can now detect that note in the fragrance now that I've been made aware of it. Needless to say, the fragrance of the unicum is beautifully layered and is all around you from morning to evening. While there is so much uniqueness with the Dendrobium unicum, it does fall into the general Callista section of Dendrobiums defined by Pseudobulbous orchids with pendant inflorescence. So, there is a little addition that I would like to add to my update. I have a wonderful lady called Michelle Fucarino who sent me images of her Dendrobium unicum, which I'm happy to share. Look at the length of the most recent cane. From what I can discern, that cane bloomed with 10 blooms, and you would think that I'm now not satisfied with my best blooming ever. Well, that is not the case, but <laughs> there's always a but, right? Anyway, but when I see the length of Michelle's recent cane, I see the potential in the orchid that I have not achieved with mine. 
I am interested seeing how long the cane is in comparison to mine, and it makes me think that there is more potential in my unicum than I was initially settling for. Now, the unicums do not bloom from older canes on nodes that did not bloom in the previous year, as with Dendrobium nobilis or Tortile. So that is not my reasoning for getting a longer cane. Is the blooming on a cane that is it? It is what it is. All the cane serves after that is as a storage organ, an important storage organ. So you see, the more storage organs a deciduous dendrobium can grow, the longer storage organs, the bigger storage organs a deciduous dendrobium can grow, the stronger the orchid becomes. Short storage organs, while better than nothing, hmm, a storage structure that is double the length. That is a major boost to the health and strength of the orchid. And for that reason, I am curious to see if I can get my unicum to put on a similar stunt and grow up. <laughs> Now, my fertilizer levels are a little conservative, but when I see the size of my canes along with my dry climate, I do not see the point of fertilizing this orchid with more than 300 parts per million, which it currently gets every day. And in my climate, for this little orchid, 300 parts per million is already pushing the limit because of how quickly my air dries up mounts. Salt buildup is a real hazard here, and I flushed this mount daily after the fertilizer solution went on the orchid first thing in the morning. By flushing my mount, I mean I take my sprayer, which is filled with plain water, and then mist the mount down again thoroughly after 30 minutes of initially going around with the fertilizer. As you can see, the mount is also somewhat unconventional. It is 100% inorganic. I have an extractor fan material that replicates sphagnum moss and it holds on to humidity really well, but... Recently, I've been fortunate to source some amazing cork pieces, and yes, my unicorn is going to transition to the cork mount very, very soon, because maybe, just maybe, it will do better on that organic mount, and I can attempt to grow longer canes, thanks to the visuals I have of Michelle Fucarino's dendrobium now. <laughs> I won't know until I mount this orchid and then monitor the new growth that is already underway during the 2023 growing season. Seeing as my unicum can live outside all year round where I am at in southern Spain, it's not one that I will have to be concerned about accommodating in the tight squeeze that is my winter orchid holding space. I would like to thank Michelle for sending me the images of her unicum, for giving me the visual of what potential my unicum could have. And if you don't want to miss the videos when I mount this orchid and follow its progress in the coming months, hopefully years, please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already done so. Thank you so much. In the coming years, I am aiming for my unicum canes to be double the length of what we see now, which is approximately 20 centimeters. Also, would you please do the Care Collab crew another favor and like the video? It really helps with the algorithm, helps to bring awareness to these videos and the Care Collab initiative. And with that, bring information and updates on specific orchids to the front of the search, which in turn helps anyone who is searching for information on Dendrobium unicum. It's a wonderful cycle all around, helping everyone involved. Thank you for that as well and know that your support is appreciated by me and those participating in this Dendrobium Unicum Care Collab. And all the while I was inhaling this amazing fragrance. I wish I could tell you to tap a fragrance on your devices so that you can experience what I am while I was filming. Maybe one day artificial intelligence makes it possible to have smell -o vision Then I would suggest that you tap apricot and tangerine at the same time and boom! you will be permeated with the unique and beautiful fragrance from the unique orchid that is Dendrobium unicum. Any questions about detailed care? I will link my original care video in the description for you to have a look at. Alternatively though, the comments are there for a reason, so ask away. Thank you so very much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.